Hi, so last time I showed you how two completely simple uh, paint techniques can get you out of trouble with painting, let you master your mistakes and paint with real confidence. This time I'm going to show you how exactly the same paint techniques can be used to get really dramatic light effects and paint flesh tones that glow with life. All right, well, what I've got here is my reference book, the Caravaggio, one of the masters of uh, kind of late Renaissance Italian painting. This guy basically changed the way that paintings looked. A genius, really, and it's exactly this kind of thing that makes him such a genius. You know, modeling flesh uh, using light effects, in these blend zones where the shadow meets the highlight, we have all kinds of interesting flesh tones going on. And the reason for that is that a human arm is not a solid lump. It is very slightly translucent. And so where light hits it, when it meets the shadow, you get light effects shining through the flesh. The flesh slightly glows at this blend point. And that's exactly how we're going to apply the techniques of blending and paint manipulation that we saw in our previous video. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is block in the big areas of shadow using cadmium red straight out the tube. And let me promise you that what we're tackling today is no more complex than the previous uh, demo, except that our shapes are just a bit more complicated. And in order to tackle them and show you guys how I'm making decisions, I'm going to be using a comparator mirror. So there you are. If you're new to this channel, what you're seeing in the mirror is our source image reflected as if it is here on the surface that we're painting on. So the way that I'm building this image up is that I'm looking back and forth like this and I'm thinking okay I'm gonna put this in there like that and I can look back and forth and make adjustments yeah and that's okay that looks pretty good Right, so now I'm going to try and tackle the face. Uh, faces are an intricate challenge only because it's very easy to get bogged down in the challenges of eyes, nose, mouth, when in fact what you need to paint is light falling across surfaces. So I haven't painted eyes, nose, mouth. I've just blocked in the big areas of shadow and I've been pretty rough about it as well. So do you see how simply this comparator mirror makes quick comparisons back and forth between what you want to paint and what you're painting on? And it's also a real delight to be able to show you into my process in a totally new way. And yeah, I'm noticing this cheek is slightly off. That's better, yeah. So the next thing I'm gonna do is apply the yellow. And uh, as I apply it, I can push into that red and begin to get a blend. And as I do this more and more, you should be able to see you know, a feeling of light falling off flesh beginning to emerge. The magic trick will start to reveal itself, I promise you. And whereas previously the thing that may have frustrated uh, a novice painter was getting all these shapes with confidence in the first place, I think this mirror um, helps you to be reassured about shape so that you can enjoy the paint application as I'm doing here. Perhaps you can see what I mean about this uh, orange under the armpit there. And as I look over the top of our mirror here, I can see all kinds of things about the subtleties of these shapes that aren't here yet. But I've got close enough by applying these two colours to be able to notice what's wrong. And that is a really critical thing with painting, is knowing what's wrong and not feeling disheartened by it. So 
So in the first video, I talked about how to push and pull and manipulate mistakes around on the surface of the picture until you get what you want. Well, then I was adjusting a stick man we'd drawn here. The techniques are no different. I'm just uh, refining this chap's collarbone. And just trying to give myself a little room there in the chin to sneak in a highlight. And I can refine that shape more by applying paint again. And he's got a little sliver of shadow around the edge of his chin. So I'm going to put in another brush mark there. That's in the right place. But I now need to come back and remove paint to refine things back into just what I wanted there. So now I'm going to block in the next tone up, steering clear of our edges for the time being. No one really before Caravaggio was using these sorts of techniques. Uh, so you have to put yourself in the, in the imagination of the time. Imagine being confronted by something that looked like reality, made by a human hand. Must have been, it must have been a religious experience. And what we'll see when we put these shadows in, there's no other way to describe it. We will see three-dimensional depth and it will mix with the red that's already on the surface. And as I creep up to our edges here, I can be really subtle. This is not, you, you know, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to do this. We've got to a stage now where we can see confidently what our image is. We can also see how uh, if we build up in slow stages, we don't need to be scared by any particular stage. I want to leave a tiny sliver of the red and the yellow, which will then mean that I can come back and push and pull and blend those separate colors like this. And that shade to red to yellow to highlight is exactly what we touched upon in our first video. Um, it's now an hour later and I've had something to eat and uh, I'm going to really enjoy bringing up that final layer. So there is our source image in the comparator mirror. The highlights here are a good bit lighter than in our painting. I'm going to block in the major areas resisting uh, the, uh, the edges here. And I'm going to then come back and subtly blend and I can use the the way that this brush flattens out when I push it to get the wider shapes. And I'm looking all the time for little things that, where the paint, you know, does the talking for itself. Right, well, we're on the home straight now. All we need to do is subtly blend some of these areas together. So again, I've got a clean brush here. And I'm hardly touching the surface of this picture at all. And now we're in the final stages and this is starting to be, it's starting to be the kind of image that people would look at and say, wow, you know, how did you do that? You are so talented. But honestly, as we watch this together, ask yourself whether a single thing I've done here has involved God-given talent. The, the talent, I suppose, in Caravaggio was to choose his subjects and to arrange such compelling pictures. But the, the actual technical process of it is not talent. It is just knowledgeable process. Apply paint, adjust it, the techniques we've talked about, and then blend. And then apply another layer of paint and do exactly the same thing again. And you can break this down into even more stages than I've shown you today. But the point I'm making is that this is all to do with knowing your process. And the 
Pirate and Mirror gives us both uh, a new way in. So what I wanted to show you in this video is that even when paintings seem really complex, untouchable, if you break them down, well, they suddenly become simple. And the way to do this, or the way I propose to do this on this channel, is to get close to what paint is actually doing. Of course, on the easel behind me, I'm gonna be making quite large scale, technically challenging oil paintings, because that's my, my job, really. But I'm gonna invite you into the process by getting closer than ever before using the comparison mirror. So if you wanna get involved in what Painting Lab is up to, you can now go to our website, paintinglab.com, and you can sign up to our mailing list. This means that you'll be amongst the first to hear when Tim Jennison and I release the comparison mirror glimpse that you've seen me using in the video today. I think when that happens, when you guys have the power to draw and paint the way that you've always wanted to in your hands, that's when this channel is really gonna to start to take off, but it will require you guys getting involved. And um, I'd be delighted if you wanted to. Of course, you can do all the normal things as well. You can like and subscribe and leave me a comment and hit the notification bell. That's really important because we're releasing videos all the time and I want you guys to be aware of everything that happens as it happens. So we're getting close to Christmas, aren't we? And uh, I'm feeling festive. I might return with another video before the big day with a slightly more seasonal looking painting lab. But until then, good luck with all your holiday themed creativity and your efforts to draw and paint. And I will see you next time. <laughs>